Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we're going to discuss about using Nmap, network mapping tool, to actually look out for all the IT assets, IT devices within an enterprise network. So we can look for laptops, desktops, servers, network attached storage, mobile devices, and look for potential openings into all these assets. So some key areas that we can think about is in terms of the services they're running on top of all these platforms, as well as the potential exposure or vulnerability in them and be able to directly gain access into those systems or those services and then to leverage and further your exploitation. So without further ado, let's get started on today's tutorial. So on the background of Colorlytics running and we can open up terminal and from here on we can zoom in a little so it's easier for you to see. And you can enter ifconfig to actually see the IP address of the Colonix machine. So in this case, we have 192.168.1.23. So we can also recognize the net mask of 255.255.255.0. So this meant that in the internal intranet network, we have IP address range of 192.168.1.0 all the way to 255. So this is a very important concept. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to open up a new window and we're going to use a tool called NetDiscover. So NetDiscover will actually tell us what are all the IP addresses within the range. So you can think of a couple of scenarios. One is that you're at a airport or two, you're at a cafe and you're offering free wireless. So when there is free wireless, you can actually scan the network for potential opening, whether they're mobile devices or whether they're servers or whether they are network attached storage and so on. So we can go ahead and enter NetDiscover, followed by dash R, which is the range, and then we can enter 192.168.1.1. So once you do that, it would actually start scanning the network, the entire network for all the IT devices that are active. So in this case, we can actually see the scan completing, and we can see a bunch of IP addresses. So we have a couple of Samsung electronics, a tree of them, and this could be mobile devices. And then we got TP-Link technologies. So this could be a wireless adapter connected to a machine. And then we got Apple. So again, this could be an iPhone. And then we got Xtag Electronics. So this could be a web gateway, an access point, a router. And you'll be able to see all this key information. So the next thing we're going to look at is to boot up ZenMap. And ZenMap is a graphical user interface of Nmap. Nmap is a network mapper tool that you have learned from the previous tutorials about how you can scan specific operating system for services that are running or applications you're running and then finding out where are the vulnerabilities. So in this case, for example, we can look at 192.168.1.1. and look at what other potential information within this system. So we can do an intense scan to look out for all the information within this system. So the great thing about ZenMap is that it will build up a graphical user interface of Nmap and then it will look out for potential versions of the services and it will map out all the network topology within the network. So this makes it really, really useful as a penetration tester. So they have a visualization of what's going on in the network and how you should plan your attacks. So because we're using an intense scans, again, all the TCP ports, it will take a while. It will take a couple of minutes to complete the scan because it is going to tell us a comprehensive version of what are the services inside of the operating system and then telling you how you can potentially exploit them. So here we've completed the scan and it did take quite some time, which is 213 seconds. So if you scroll up, you can see all the services that it has detected using ZenMap or Nmap. And we can identify the exact versions of each of those services. So here we have a file transfer protocol. We got secure shell opening. We got Telnet. We got a mail server, a mail service that is running. And then we got an Apache web server and many other capabilities. So for today's tutorial, we want to learn about Java RMI. So RMI is a remote method invocation, and this would actually tell us a lot of information, and we can actually look up for potential exploits to actually gain access into the Java RMI, which would give us a shell into the target machine. So in this case, we are going to open up a new window, and we can zoom in again. And this time around, we are going to launch the MSF console. So within MSF console, we can also look out for 
the Java RMI exploits or auxiliary modules and see if there's any chance for us to exploit the server or the service. So now we are starting up the Metasploit framework. At the same time, we can also open up new window and we can zoom in again. Likewise, we can use search exploit to actually find out whether there is potential exploits that we can look out for and deploy against the server. So in this case, we can enter Java-RMI or RMI alone, and then we can look out for more information. So in this case, perhaps we can use underscore because of the different kind of naming conventions, or we can just use RMI itself, which is unique to Java in some sense. So over here, we actually see a lot of information and there are certain information about Java that we can look out for. So again, we can see Apache web server and many other capabilities here. And here we can see there is a Java RMI connection deserialization, a insecure default connection. There's a Jenkins CLI, Java deserialization again. So there are a lot of capabilities and exploits that we can use that is already packaged into Call of Linux. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to search for Java RMI as well over here in Metasploit. So here we can see a couple of information. We can see that we have a few matching modules. So we got a auxiliary getter and we have a auxiliary scanner and then we have exploits to actually go after the particular service that is running on the operating system that we have scanned against. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the auxiliary module to help us scan, to help us scan whether the operating system is actually vulnerable to this type of exploit. So we're going to use auxiliary followed by the scanner option. So this actually help us scan the operating system to check if it is vulnerable to this exploit. So the next thing we're going to do is enter MSI, MISC followed by slash and then Java underscore RMI server. So once you hit that, then you enter show options to see what are the parameters that you can enter into. So we are going to set the R host as 192.168.1.10. And of course, if you go back into ZenMap, we can see that the port that is open is 1099. So it is coincide with our target parameter of our pod 1099. So you can go ahead and enter run or exploit and we can check whether it is vulnerable to this. So we have the scan completed and then we see that the auxiliary module execution has completed. So we are firm and we are aware that we are able to exploit into this system. So the target may be vulnerable. So we are going to use the exploit. So we are going to enter use exploit multi followed by the miscellaneous followed by java rmi server so again once you hit enter you can enter show options so once we hit show options we can see whether we got the r part the r host so we are going to set the r host as 182.168.1.10 and you hit enter on that so once you're done with that you can actually look out again for show options to see what are the other parameters that look you can look for. And once you're done setting all of those options, you hit exploit. And if the exploit is successful, we'll be able to gain a meter preter session. So here we can see that a session one has been open and we are pending for the information over here. However, no session was created. So here we're interacting with session one and then we can enter PWD and then we can enter LS-L. So here we have access, complete access into the system and then we can do all sorts of post exploitation from here on. So MM is a highly comprehensive tool. There's a lot of parameters that you can actually put in to MMAP to help you map out all those devices, the versions of those services, the operating system type. And there's also scripting capabilities within MMAP that can help you very quickly able to look out for potential vulnerabilities and then exploiting them either through brute force, looking at Metasploit and all these combination of capabilities help you accelerate the pace of gaining accesses into those devices. So I hope you've learned something valuable today and if you have any questions, 
feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of those questions. And if you like what you've just watched, remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video so they can learn more about cybersecurity tutorials. And thank you so much once again for watching.